Many Jews today feel the need for a Jewish renaissance. People are searching for a more vital and authentic mode of Jewish expression, and more than ever we need to shift, not only physically but spiritually out of exile mode. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Chilo, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. Can the rabbi please elaborate regarding the correct pronunciation of Hebrew vowels? First of all, I'd like to point out that essentially what I'm about to tell you regarding the vowels of the Hebrew language uh, is based to a large degree on what I learned from my teacher in these matters, Rabbi Ben Sion Kohen, Zichrono Livracha, whose name I've mentioned before and who wrote a book called Sefath Emeth on the whole subject of Hebrew language and its pronunciation and he wrote a short version of that book which I have here called Kosht Imre Emeth which is a, uh, a summary of a much longer book in which all this information appears and I can only recommend these books very highly. To the matter at hand, the ancient uh, experts in Hebrew language, such, such as uh, Baal Masra, such as uh, Ben Asher, writes explicitly, and this goes back at least uh, 1200 years, that there are seven vowels in the Hebrew language. He refers to these vowels as Shiv'a Melachim, eight, I'm sorry, seven kings, Shiv'a Melachim, and the reason they are called kings, or these vowels, is because it is the vowel that really tells you, orders you, what to do. Uh, and here it is correct that we mention, in passing, the uh, great importance of vowels in Hebrew, and, and in fact in uh, any language. Take, for example, uh, English as spoken in North America, as opposed to English as spoken in the UK or in Australia, for example. The language is essentially the same language in many respects, in most respects. And if even one goes more deeply into the matter, one sees that the consonants are being pronounced essentially in the same manner by all English speakers, uh, wherever they may be. But the uh, great difference between the different accents and pronunciations of English is directly related to the pronunciation of the vowels. Uh, if, for example, we take the word father in, in English, we all know that in some parts of, uh, uh, of the world, such as the UK, uh, this word is pronounced by many as father and uh, and in fact, it's not so different from the way the word is pronounced by natives of New York. They also say father or something like that. Whereas in other parts of the, of the, of the English-speaking world, I should say, uh, the, word, the same word is pronounced rather differently. And the same is true uh, of, of Hebrew. The, the vowels make all the difference when it comes to the pronunciation of the language and the, the overall sound and timbre and, and uh, impression that the language makes. So the seven vowels that the ancient grammarians and experts refer to are as follows. They speak about the kames, which is also known uh, often as the kamats, they speak about a patah, which is also known as a patah. They speak of a, a sere and a serol and a, a shurek and a holem and a hirik. Uh, those are the seven vowels. And now we will go through these vowels one by one. And in order to do this, we really need to take uh, three vowels, first of all, at one glance. We have to speak of them together because in fact we have uh, two progressions in Hebrew uh, regarding the vowels, two progressions each of which consists of three vowels. The first progression is the uh, begins with the patah which is the a ah vowel. A ah as in uh, the u in the English word up, a. Ah. 
uh, although it's usually a bit longer, it's not up, it's R, uh, longer R, and then we have the opposite end of the scale uh, with regards to this progression. We have the holem, which is an O sound, similar to an O in English, but not exactly the same, as, as you can hear the difference between O and O. But you have the, on the one hand, you have the A and you have the O at the top of the scale, and in, in the middle you have a, an intermediate vowel, that's called the Qumis, and that is neither an A nor an O, but somewhere in the middle. And I will pronounce them for you now, and you will, I believe, you will hear uh, three distinct vowel sounds. We have the Pathakh, which is A, we have the Qumis, which is A, and we have the Holem, which is O. A, O, O. A, O, O. There you have three vowel sounds. The Pathakh, again, is an A, the Qumis is an A, which is actually, for English speakers, should not be difficult. For, there are many words in English where we have a, a similar uh, vowel. We mentioned the way natives of New York pronounce the word father, A. The A sound is exactly a Qumis. It's not an O and it's not an A. That is exactly the correct pronunciation of the Qumis. And the Holem is an O, as it is pronounced by, to this day, by most of the Jewish people. This uh, intermediate sound, the Qumis, is to this day pronounced correctly by Jews from certain parts of the world, particularly Persian Jews from Paras, that if you ask a Jew from Persia where he comes from, if he at least belongs to the older generation, uh, and he hasn't affected a different accent, or he wasn't uh, mistaught, you will hear his reply. In Hebrew he will say that he is from, he won't say Paras, and he won't say Poros, which is perhaps what an Ashkenazi or a Temani would say, but he will say, I am from Paras, not Paras, not Poros, but Paras. Paras is exactly the Qames sound, and this sound is uh, a very common vowel sound in Farsi, in the language spoken in Iran to this day, also in other countries in that part of the world, such as uh, Af Afghanistan. If you speak to a native of Afghanistan, you will hear they do not pronounce, they don't mention or refer to their country as Afghanistan, but rather they say Afghanistan. And that R is again the Qumis sound, and this is a central vowel sound in uh, many languages in, in this general part of the world, and it is also an important vowel in the, in the Hebrew language. And it is not uh, to be, uh, something to be surprised at, that uh, this is not known to many Jews today. Already uh, many, many years ago, 900 odd years ago, uh, Rabbi Abraham ibn Ezra, one of the greatest Hebrews, um, I'm sorry, one of the greatest experts, I should say, uh, regarding the Hebrew language, uh, writes that uh, many Jews do not know how to pronounce the Qames, the A sound, and he says this is only known to the Jews of Eretz Israel and the Hachamim, he says, the wise men, the learned men in Egypt and in North Africa. In other words, and he was a Jew who traveled uh, essentially all over the known Jewish world. So he is testifying to us that uh, this was not already, this was already not known very well already 900 and more years ago. But it is definitely possible for anyone who wishes to uh, get used to the correct pronunciation and to pronounce it correctly. That is one progression and that is three vowel sounds. There is another progression which also begins with uh, patah, which is the a. Ah, and it ends, A ah, over here, and E eh, over here. E eh, as in egg. So you have A ah, and E, eh, and in the middle you have A. Ah. You have A, ah, A, ah, E. Eh. The A ah sound is like the A in the word apple in English, which any English speaker, again, should find very easy to pronounce. And that corresponds to the serol, to the three dots in, in uh, the Hebrew vowel system. So, for example, the correct pronunciation of the Hebrew word for king is not melech, as usually pronounced by Sfaradim and Ashkenazim, for example. They pronounce the serol as an e, as in the e in the word egg. Nor, nor is it the a sound like a pathah, as pronounced by the Temanim, who do not say melech, but malach. Uh, the true pronunciation of the serol is like the a in the word apple, and therefore it is pronounced malach. So it's not melech, but malach. There is a difference. Uh, 
and therefore you have that progression, the a, the patah, the a, which is the serol, and the e, which is the sere. is because in the uh, ancient Babylonian system of vowels, no distinction was made between the serol and the patah, between the a and the a, this is why the temanim who follow that system to this day do not distinguish between a patah, an a, and a serol, which is an a. But according to the system followed by the majority of the Jewish people, which is in fact more correct, more authentic, where there is such a distinction, on the, on the one hand, between a patah and a serol, a and a, on the other hand, there is also a distinction between a serol and a sere. They're not both e as pronounced by the Sfaradim. So the correct pronunciation, the distinction between these three, these three vowel sounds, patah, serol, sere, that progression is a, a, e. And with those two progressions, we have just covered five of the seven essential vowel sounds in Hebrew, which leaves us only two more, and that is the hirik, which is the e. There is a longer e and a shorter e, depending on the word, but these are fine points which you don't need to go into right now. So you have the hirik, which is the one dot, which is the e, and we have the u sound, which is the shurek, which is also has a short and long version, but these again are fine points and we don't want to make things complicated for now, we'll keep them simple. And, uh, and, that, and that in fact is uh, all, that's all there is to know. Seven pure vowel sounds, not complicated, not combinations of uh, vowel sounds. Each of these sounds is a pure vowel sound, and uh, that is essentially all one needs to know in order to pronounce uh, esen the esen essential pronunciation of Hebrew. There are a few more smaller points which perhaps we will mention in, uh, on, on another occasion. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.